This is the victory by Icon Custom Homes. Now, let me give you a disclaimer. This particular model home is located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I don't do business in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I'm not licensed there, but Icon will build this in El Paso, Texas. And Las Cruces is only about an hour away from El Paso. So I drove out there so I can get this video for you guys because I understand that when you're building a custom home, you don't have many options to physically see in person. And I wanna make this process as seamless and enjoyable as possible for you guys. Now notice how this is a three car garage with the garage on the side. That's awesome, man. I love this look because it's pure house in the front. You need a bigger lot for this because whenever you're putting your garage on the side like this, you have to push the home out to the back. So it takes up your backyard. And you'll see that in a little while on this particular house, the backyard's not too big on this. By the way, the lights aren't flashing. I just use a particular, um, I think it's called FPS or frames per second. Uh, which was 25 frames per second so these lights are flashing on the video but they don't flash in person um, notice how there's wood siding throughout this whole house and i'll go over the benefit of that a little bit later completely ignore what just happened there this front thing right here it's not functional it's just so that way when somebody walks in your house they're not directly looking into your house there's a wall that gives them some sort of mystery you got the first bedroom right here which is about a 12 by 12 looks a bit a little bit smaller on camera but Standard for bedrooms with custom homes are about 12 by 12. And this home's in the 2,800 square foot range. I believe to be exact, it's 2,864. Um, and then it's four beds, three full bathrooms, and it has its own restroom. Of course, this bedroom has its own restroom. And it's good that it's in the front of the house because since it's in the front, you have the ability to make this a guest room. That way when people come over, they can stay in this particular room and use it as a guest room. Um, but typically for custom homes, they'll have a minimum of two and a half bathrooms. I often see, especially in this price range of home, each bedroom will almost have its own restroom or it does. Every bedroom has its own restroom. Now these ceilings are about 16 feet tall. And with this particular builder as an estimate, right? As an estimate, if you're planning on raising the ceiling height, you start at 12 feet and for each section, and when I say section, I mean dining room, living room, kitchen, it's $1,200 per foot, more or less. Don't take this to heart. Don't go tell the builder I said this, but as an estimate. So that means if you start at 12 feet and you go to 13 for the dining room, that's $1,200. If you go to 14, that's $2,400. If you go to 15, that's $3,600. And then you do that for the living room and the kitchen. Um, I don't think it looks nice whenever you raise the ceiling height above 12 in the kitchen, just because it doesn't feel as cozy. Um, but you get the kitchen right here, tons of cabinet space, quartz backsplash. Um, it doesn't have a butler's pantry, which in this price range, I feel like a butler's pantry should be should be there for sure. But hey, this is just a model home. It's just so you can see what the builder can do. Um, this is the pantry. I would say it's actually a little bit small for this size of house. Um, I know I, I have some particular clients that are looking to take some features from this house and they're gonna do a butler's pantry um, with, a, with another fridge in the back of the butler's pantry, um, just so it's bigger. By the way, that light that turned on and off, it turns on when you open the door, turns off when you close it. This island is about an 11 foot island. And of course it has all these cabinets under here because you need as much storage space as possible when your pantry isn't that big. Um, one cool thing is that it doesn't have the sink on the island, so you have more space to you know, put all the necessary items whenever you're entertaining. Uh, and the sink, as you saw right now when I was came, first came into the kitchen, the sink's pointing out to the backyard. The only thing with the sink in the backyard, right, like the sink right there in the place that it's at, you kind of have to put the fridge on the other side. So that's a little weird because then you got to walk all the way to your fridge when you're cooking and the fridge, the stove and the sink are all kind of far away from each other. So that's not too functional, but it looks really nice. And oh wait, pause, all this wood siding and the back of the house, Icon's making that a standard feature. Wood siding's cool, it's less maintenance than stucco because in El Paso, stucco's always cracking because of the temperature changes. Um, in the front, it's not an included feature, but for this particular home, they made it throughout the whole home. Then they raised this outdoor patio, which you know definitely costs some money. They put an outdoor kitchen. I also don't know if you noticed, but the backyard is not the biggest backyard. And remember, this garage is on the side, which is leading to this backyard not being too big. Um, but anyways, I was talking about the fridge being far away from the stove and the sink. If you like to cook a lot, then it's not too functional, but that's the thing about custom. You tell the builder, hey, you know what, Mr. Builder, I want this, I want this, I want this, and then they give you the sketch, 
and they come back and you'd think, oh, you know what, now this doesn't make sense because then I have to walk all the way over here to get my groceries and blah, blah, blah. And then the builder says, well, I can't do it like this if you want the sink here because it'll lead to this issue, but we could do this and this. So that's the cool thing about custom. You tell the builder what you want, they give you what you want, or they tell you why they can't do certain things. And it's different than production homes, which compromise comprises, com comprises, I don't know. I, I sell real estate, I'm not good at words. Which in El Paso, about 80% of builders are production builders. So you're not making any structural changes. Um, anyways, laundry room, pretty big on this particular one. You got space for folding clothes and then you have a sink. Um, it doesn't have the dog wash area, but if you'd want the dog wash instead of this regular sink, it's the same cost. Um, I, I prefer just this regular sink because I feel like the whole dog thing takes up too much space. But if you have a dog that you need to wash inside, then you might as well get that. But you're sacrificing some space inside of your laundry room. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now we got the primary bedroom. Now I love this primary bedroom because for some reason Icon is obsessed with making primary bedrooms way bigger than they need to be. I don't like it when they're too big. Like 21 feet in width is just way too big. I think this one's like 15 by 17. And then they have this cool little indention so that way when you hang curtains, because curtains are back in style now, you get to hide them. I feel like it looks more luxurious. It probably doesn't cost that much. You just got to eliminate some sheetrock. I, I love this look. I love it. Um, but anyways, going into the master, the primary bathroom. It's pretty big. You could probably sleep in here, but it's not excessively big. You got the makeup vanity area, and then you have enough space on both the left side and the right side to put all your stuff. So I like how the sinks aren't directly in the middle because me personally, when I'm organizing my colognes and all that, I just I would rather have it on one side rather than using the right side and the left side. If you use both sides, it looks a little messy. Um, those are the little things you don't think about when you're building a production home. And then this primary shower, it's kind of deep in there so that way you're not getting too much of a draft. I'd probably still put up a curtain just because I don't like the coldness. Now I'm getting inside of this bathtub because a lot of people say, well, I can't fit in there. I'm a five foot nine male, about 160 pounds. I had, I want to say like four inches of space while sitting inside of this bathtub. So if you're six feet, you could probably sit in here comfortably. If you're like six two, it'll get a little less comfortable. And then if you're six five, nothing's going to fit you, man. You need to like, or, or woman, you need a shrink. No, no, I'm just kidding, you don't need a shrink. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty big standalone tub. You got the closet in the back of the bathroom, which is where it should be. It's the most convenient, it's private, nobody needs to come in here. It has tile in here, because you don't want to be wetting your carpet when you get out of the bathtub. And Tiger Woods is about to scare the heck out of you because he's right there. <laughs> this is the one car garage, it connects to the main closet, which I haven't exactly determined what the main benefit to it connecting to the main closet is, but I love it. I love it because you could just drive into the one car garage and boom, you're right inside your bedroom. Maybe you get home from a long day of work and you just go right to sleep. You change, you get in the shower, and then you go to sleep. So I feel like that's pretty cool. Um, hand texture, of course, insulated um, garage on the interior walls, epoxy flooring, um, as for the normal garage, I'm not sure if I went through it just yet, but the, the two car garage, it's currently being used as an office, so you won't be able to see it along with like how it connects to the outside. Um, but since it's the model home, they're, they're using it as an office. Um, now we're back in the living room and the kitchen. Notice the pitch ceilings and those tile beams. If you're putting tile on some wood beams, um, what you got to keep in mind is that it's going to require extra bracing, which is going to require more money because it costs more to brace more to hold that weight. Um, to the left side, you're using that as an office and to the right side, which is the garage, they're also using this as an office or a design center room. Anyways, Icon Custom Homes has communities and lots that you can build on everywhere in El Paso. And then if you have your own lot, they can do that too. It's a bit more of a tedious process, so you can call me and I'll guide you on that. But they have one acre lots in Clint. They actually have some one acre lots coming up in Cimarron Canyon Unit 5. At the time I'm making these videos, those are going to be limited. Horizon, West Side, there's lots all over the place. And we'd have to discuss, you know, would the house you want fit on that floor plan and all that. It's tedious. There's 20 plus builders in El Paso, Texas. If you want to be guided on how to get a new home in El Paso, go ahead and call me at the number I listed. I'd love to help you out and just answer questions.